This is an entrance to where you're dropped off, where you have to walk down to enter into the palace grounds. At the entrance gate, they will have signage depicting what can and cannot be worn while you're inside of the palace. You'll notice here the different types and articles of clothing. Some of these pertain to traditional Thai dress and other to foreigner's dress. There is a location immediately upon entrance through this gate where you can buy clothes that are deemed appropriate while walking around the temple grounds. You're gonna walk around here and then that's where you're gonna be getting your tickets from. surrounding the building where the Emerald Buddha is contained are lined with 178 episodes which follows Prince Rama's quest to rescue his beloved wife Sita. The palace grounds currently covers an area of 218,000 square meters that are enclosed fully by walls measuring 19,000 meters. This palace is laid out with halls for residents, throne halls, as well as administrative buildings and a temple that serves as the Chapel Royal. The Temple of the Emerald Buddha, the Chapel Royal, is located in the front court and has a boundary wall to enclose all the structures indicative of a Buddhist monastery. There are 12 pavilions with marble vases placed to the north and south for the faithful to sit and listen to sermons or to chant rhyming stanzas on special occasions of the Buddhist calendar. There's no photography allowed inside. No cameras, no video. And as beautiful as it is on the outside, it's even more beautiful on the inside. The Emerald Buddha that is considered to be an object of national veneration is carved from a block of jasper in the attitude of meditation. The Emerald Buddha has several different outfits which are changed throughout the year based on holy festival days. Each of the outfits were commissioned by a different king during their individual it's reigns. At the pinnacle of the back of the room, sitting up about 40 or 50 feet, you're able to sit on the floor and, and just chill. It's very serene. Very spiritual. It's a spiritual place. It's like a church or any other spiritual place that you would expect to go to. So res show it some respect. Show the respect that it deserves. If you were going to go to your country and you had some kind of religious belief or some sanctuary, show it the same kind of respect that you would show it in, the, in your home country. You're also able to sit on the floor, and the floor is a nice, cool, tiled floor. It feels very comfortable. You should not point your feet towards the Buddha, though. I love that they have these little outdoor buildings all around uh, the perimeter of the palace. You, know, you can sit underneath them and relax, and they're all made out of marble. It's very cool underneath the shade of all of them. So you could stay several hours here just walking around. stone of this building was laid by Rama V in 1876. The ground floor has rooms which are used as offices and for the king's own bodyguards. The upper floor that is accessed by outside staircases has a foyer flanked by picture galleries and private audience chambers in the east wing and the west wing. The top floor of this building is reserved for crematory relics and small urns of Rama IV, V, VI, 7th, 8th, and 9th. This is the last building that you see, I believe, before you head on out. It appears that I'm walking through doors that are going to take me off the exit, following signs that say exit. So I believe that that's the last place. If you're coming to Bangkok, this is a must-see destination stop for you. 
I hope you enjoyed this short video, and I'll leave you with a peaceful area that I found where you can sit down and just listen to the wildlife. See you guys in the next video.